moment. We are starting 5.2. And so uh, let's go with normal distributions, finding probabilities. So let's see, 5.1, we did that. And we, were we were trying to find the uh, area underneath the curve. Is that right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to try to find probabilities. And probabilities were, uh, remember, all the way to chapter three and chapter four, right? Probabilities were like, hey, a dice rolls. What's the chances of it being coming up a four? Well, it was one sixth, right? So now we're going to get a little more complicated and getting into the normal distribution. Let's jam. And if, there it goes. So don't need to write this one down. Let's think with our, think to ourselves here. Random variable called X is normally distributed. You can find the probability that X will fall in a given interval by calculating still the area underneath the normal curve, which we know how to calculate the area underneath the curve. And it looks like this. Is that right? Ooh, look at that. Totally cool stuff now. Animation. So let's see. If, if the average is 500 and if the standard deviation is 100, if you're talking about 600, aren't you just looking at one standard deviation away? Wouldn't that correspond to a z-score of one? Is that right? Oh, how cool. Okay, let's we'll jam with it here. So we'll, it's a normal curve. Yep, the standard curve. So notice the only thing that changes is really this, just the scale, right? We're going to go from 500. We're going to shape it down all the way to zero. Instead of x values, we change x values into pretty much z-scores. And you get the exact same thing. That's it. So there's a whole bunch of gibberish right over here. But essentially, it says you change, uh, you find out how much is the standard deviation away, and it's mu plus sigma, which would be 600. You go to a normal curve, and you understand that, hey, look, it's just 0 plus 1 is 1. OK, the bottom one is much simpler to see. Is that right? And that's the way we do it. The guy that invented this, I want to just shake his hand because he started a whole new math just because that. And then we're going to look at central limit theorem in 5.4, which is then those two sort of brought statistics together. It's like, wow, we can actually talk about stuff using numbers. OK, so talked about this already here. So z-score of 1 technically corresponds to the 600 score here. OK, so now let's do a little more work. Again, just 11 slides for 252. Two, two. It's going to be real quick. So let's find probabilities for normal distribution. So now this one here, we'll, let's work through this one here. That one was just an example to look at. The national study found that college students with jobs worked an average of 22 hours per week. The standard deviation is nine hours. Okay, the college student with a job is selected random. What's the probability that that student works for less than four hours per week? Huh. Assuming the lengths of time college students work are normally distributed and are represented by the variable X. And looks like adopted from Sally May, public affairs. So it looks like it's legit data here. So you guys talk to me here. Uh, how many of you have a job outside of school and you work roughly 20, 22 hours-ish a week. Okay, about 20, like 20 to 24, let's do that uh, capsule, okay. How many uh, work less than that? Anybody works less than 20 hours a week? No, no, listen to me, okay. How many works than more than 24 hours a week? They're like working into 30s and 40s. Okay, gotcha, okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Yeah. So it's interesting. Um, it's interesting. People that go to like UC schools right out of high school, right? Uh, there's been some studies done. It's kind of like, are they uh, like, are they smarter? Are they more intellectual? Do they grasp materials better and all that stuff, right? And we find out through studies and studies, it's the fact that because they don't have a job, they can concentrate their studies more on their studying, right? And so that gives them that extra sort of practice, extra time to do so unless they went there to party like crazy and that's about it so let's jam so let's go with it here we're going to do this right here so we're going to have to figure out the z score we good corresponding to the 24 hours so we don't have to bring it all the way down to zero if we don't have to right but as long as we get a z score then we can look at our table good 
So let's see if this makes sense here. A z squared that corresponds to four hours is uh, four, that's the x value, minus the average divided by nine. And nicely, it turns out to a z score of negative two. Then you guys have to help me out here. Can you find, oh, hold on. Probability, doesn't probability go from zero to one? And is, isn't this area underneath this curve zero to one? So the amount of area that we get is gonna to correspond to the exact probability that we have. Are we good? That's like a, a light bulb moment. Like, oh, wow, area actually equals probability as long as it's a normal curve. So can you either by table or by calculator, which we did last time, which Tristan's work calculator does not work like that, but for all others, you can, <laughs> or you could use the table back of your book. Uh, can you find for me the left-hand side or the area of the z-score to the left corresponding to negative two. That's what we're looking for. And tell me when you have it here. If you want, I can go through the calculator motion or I could do the... Something about 0, 0.0, there's some twos in there, there's some eights in there. All right, I see some people waiting for me to do my calculator. So let's do my calculator. Zunk. Okay, again, you can also do it by table, right? Don't forget you can do it by table. All right, anybody talk to me? How did we do it last time? See if we remember. Second what? Second vars, the distribution right here. Okay. Which one do we pick? The CDF number two, right? Click on that. And now what do we got to put in? Uh, initially, we want to get the what? We want to get the lowest, lowest value possible, right? So we're going to put, uh, we want a z score of negative 10,000, 100,000, who cares, right? We want the area from negative 10,000 z score all the way to negative two. Good there. Remember on the previous slide, we change everything into zeros and ones, right? So the mean, our average is zero. Standard deviation is one. We click on it and tell me what you guys get. Point zero two two seven. Everybody good there? Uh, if you don't have it, raise your hand. I'll come by and help you with it, okay? <laughs> no, no problem. Um, so you guys uh, talk to me, tell me if you don't have that number and I'll come by help, but I think it should be good. And then also you can do it by table. And if you want, I'll have a table of values of, for you guys for the test if need be. Okay. Okay. I got myself an answer called, uh, 0 0.022, it looks like eight. Let's round this off to about eight. So it looks like this right here. So P means probability. Probability that the Z score is less than negative two is 0 0.088, uh, 228. Okay guys, and talk to me, what does this mean? What does this mean? Cool, yeah, it's the area into the curve. So now let's talk about what it means in terms of working for, um, jobs outside of school. Yeah, so let's see, if ask another student, right? And ask them, what's the probability that they work for four hours or less? All right, so it's the probability that a student works for less than four hours a week is 0 0.0228 or roughly about 
two and a half percent maybe, right? Okay, let you guys read that. Was that good? So now the question is this, if it's less than 5%, it is a unusual event, we good? Okay. Let's say, let's do another one. Yeah, if we have to. Okay, all yours, go for it. A survey indicates that each trip to a supermarket, a shopper spends an average of 43 minutes, standard deviation of 12 minutes in the store. Is that you guys, you guys shop for about 45 minutes in the store, go get groceries? Heck no. Me like go in, get what I need, get out. That's it. There you go. That's about me. Yep. So the length of the time spent in the store are normally distributed and represented by a variable called X. So real quick here, find a shopper or find the probability that a shopper will be in the store for an interval of time listed below. And then when 100 shoppers into the store, how many shoppers would be expected to be in the store for interval time listed below. Whoa, okay, so let's see how that works out. I'm gonna do a little mind game here. So A is, let's see how they do it, A, A, B, B. Okay, so they're gonna do A, B, and then A, B. So we're gonna do one and two, one and two. So let's do, let's do number one. So I need to know this, prob the probability that a shopper will be in the store for interval between 22 minutes and 52 minutes. Can you guys give me that? I don't know. Let's see what this means. So if I were to draw a normal curve, we good? Let's do a normal curve together. It looks like this. So if you wanna draw it out as well, that's fine, go for it. So then I have 43 minutes being the middle. It's a normal curve, so it's gonna go up and then come back nicely down. And we're gonna label this. The center is gonna be 43. So mu equals 43. Standard deviation is 12. So we just kind of have that in our background. So we know it's 12 minutes for the standard deviation. So really what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the area area between 22 minutes down here and 52 minutes up here. Cool. Let's do this here. Can you guys give me a Z-score for the bottom half right here? I need a Z-score for this guy, the 22 minutes. So we'll do is we'll do this Z1, because we're gonna have two of them, right? Z1 is gonna be the X that I want minus the average divided by standard deviation. Are we good there? So it's gonna be 22. So the 22 minutes minus 53 divided by 12 and we get ourselves a negative 1.75. Nice that it works out that way. Can you guys give me the Z score for Z2, which is the max value? All yours, I'll wait. Shout it out when you have it. Ding, ding. Are you okay at 0.75? Again, I'm gonna pause the recording if need be, I'll walk around and help you with it. Uh, let's see, before I do that, let's jump on the calculator real quickly here. So this is just regular old mathematics here. So the top one, what we'll do, it's gonna be 22 minus 43. Now, if you do it this way real quick here, let me do it the wrong way. This would be the wrong way to do it because the 12 is only dividing the 43, we're good. So don't do it that way. Because you have two numbers on top, we're gonna to put an extra parenthesis here. So 22 minus 43, extra parenthesis, close off the parenthesis to keep the whole entire numerator together. 
and divide by 12 and we got ourselves an answer. We're good. So you need those extra little parentheses there. Same thing for this one, 52 minutes now would correspond to open up a parenthesis 52 minus 43. We should have a positive value this time. And voila, 0.75 is good. Okay, talk to me, what do we do next? So A is done, right? A is done, I think. Let's see, Let me get, what's the, oh no, A is not done. We still need the probability here, right? So we need to plug this in. Give me the area that is between negative 1.75 and 0 0.75 on the calculator. And before I do that here, anybody still needs to help with calculating the Z-score? Did not get a 1.75 and 0 0.75. Okay, okay, I'm looking out for you guys, okay? Because this is not for me, it's for you. Okay, so how about this? We're gonna do distribution again. We're gonna go to the normal distribution. And now we're gonna go from a negative 1.75. And remember last time we worked on the fact that this guy here is a negative, this guy's a subtraction, right? Those two are way different from each other. That's calls what kind of number you have. And this one actually is a math operation. Okay, and we're gonna go all the way up to 0.75. And then again, if we think about it as going back to a normal curve, which means, because we're talking about z-scores, mu is zero, standard deviation is one. Close it off, enter, and what did you guys get? That's cool because the capital does both of those for you already here. So looks like this, if you want to write it out, it's P probability between 22 and 52 corresponds to a Z score of negative 1.75 to 0 0.75. And if you want to handle the subtraction, that's fine. Or else you just handle it on the calculator. So 0 0.7333, talk to me, raise your hand if you did not get that. Everybody's good. That means everybody got it, right? Yep, okay. Then, uh, class, we did have a question is, why do we put zero and one at the end of this little guy right here? Uh, let me zoom in just so we have it. Question is this piece right here, right? That zero and that one. All right, the reason for it is because I'll show you because we're technically we're changing instead of going like 43 and we're changing the scale here. And we're changing the scale so that it goes back to 51. So the scale goes back to this right here. And we have a the reason why we do that is because we have a chart that has all the z scores compared to the areas for normal just again normal distribution right as long as it's normally as a normal distribution here. So we technically, Brian, we're technically getting numbers from this right here. So we converted everything into X's into Z's right here. So by doing that, we converted everything back into a normal distribution curve. Does that answer your question? Cool, okay. Okay, part B, part B says, more than 37 minutes. No, 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 sorry, hold on. When 200 shoppers enter the store, how many shoppers would be expected to be in the store at the interval listed below? There's B. Da, 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 da. So talk to me, guys. Doesn't it mean that 73% or you have an area, right? You have an area of 73.73 area versus an area of one, we good? So roughly, 73% of the area is covered by the blue blue shade, is that right? So if you stick 200 people into there, 200 people into there, isn't gonna be like 73% of the 200 people. So then all we do is with this, when 200 shoppers into the store, you expect about 73% of the 200 people 
to be in that time interval. And if you just multiply that number on your calculator, and the easy thing to do here, instead of rewriting the number to be more precise, let me show you that real quickly here, because you guys can do one by yourself in just a bit. Ding, ding. I got this little number here, 0.7333, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to just click multiply. Click multiply and notice it gives you answer from the previous one. So it keeps your saved answer from the previous one. And let's multiply by 200 and see what we get. We've got about 466.6 shoppers rounding up because we can't have 0.6 of a person. That would not be good. And so rounding up gives me 147 shoppers should be in there for that time. Okay, are we good? Okay, you guys now. Slightly different, but I think we can handle it, okay? From what we know from 5.1. So any questions on this one before we go on? No, okay. So your job, I'm gonna jump back over here. This is cool. Okay, you guys, can you guys give do A and B for more than 37 minutes? So give me first the probability shopper would be in an interval more than 37 minutes. Also, if 200 shoppers were in the store, how many of them would be shopping for more than 37 minutes? All right, let me give you the hint here. Let me jump to here. That's what the, what the graph looks like. And I'll pause right now. I'll walk around till most people got it correct. All right, I'll give you one more hint here. One more hint would be this right here. So there's that. We only need one z-score because we don't need a minimum and a maximum, right? For this case, we actually just want a minimum z-score. And we want everything going off to the right. We want the area going off to the right this time. So I'll stop there. You can actually bug your neighbor about it too. That's no problem. Just don't do it on test day, okay? That would not be good. And then some other discussions. Okay, class, let's go with it. So first things first, this was the easy one. I know everybody got this one, right? 37 minus 43, that's the basic formula. This converts the X to Z score, right? Converts the X coordinate to a Z score. That's what you want. You're good there. Then we take the Z score and we go to our calculator. And I think right at the end, everybody got this one too. So we go second distribution right here, number two, voila. And so notice real quick here, as I move this around, instead of going to the left, what we want to do is we want to go to the right. And what your calculator does, it takes, once you plug this in, it says, what's your lowest Z-score? What's your highest Z-score? What's your mu? What's your average, right? And then what's your standard deviation? So right here, your lower one is gonna be a negative 0.5. Your upper one, real quick here, let's talk about this here. Remember how we said that if you pass like Z-score of three, right? you pretty much have everything inside there, right? Uh, what we want to do is we put a, a huge number in here. We don't want to just use three, four, or five. We want to put in like a thousand because that means like I've covered all this small itsy bitsy bitsy area even over here for like the longest time. If I put in 3.95, if I put in a four, it's like I'm, I'm I'm like still having area on that side of like 0 0.0023 or something. There's still a tiny bit area there. But if you got a thousand, you got everything covered. Okay, average is zero, standard deviation is one, and we click ourselves this answer here. Are we good? Okay. So now that is, um, the answer here. So let's do this really quickly here. Inside your textbook, we've got to do this because if you do it by table, your table area, notice we have to look at this here, your table four area. If you take out your textbook, flat, flat cover over here, table four, which direction is the area going from the z-score, to the left or to the right? 
starts with an L. To the left, right? Because notice this little diagram right here, right? This diagram here, yeah, the Z-score goes to the left. If you go to this table here, you still have the small Z-score. Whoa, that's one. Uh, right here, see this? The Z-score and then the area always goes off to the left. So this is a Z-score from zero to 0 0.5. This is z-score from 0.5 to 1, right? or to all the way to 5. Um, notice the area always goes off to the left. So if you're going to use a table, if you're using a table, and just want to show you kind of this how this works here. If you're going to use a table, what's going to happen on the table, it's only going to give you this side of your z-score always. We're good? So let me, let me find. By table four, I'm gonna find area. I'm gonna find this area right here. And you guys, if you want, if you have a book with you, please do it with me because it kind of just it adds a lot more information. So I'm on I'm on this table here with a z-score that's not not more than halfway yet, right? It's on the left of your right here. It's a, the small, it's the small side. We good? That's that table. I wish they made like table four and five or something, but four, one, four, two. Okay, so if I look at that table, I'm finding a, uh, I'm finding the corresponding to that value there. So 0 0.5, in fact, I look here and across the top, I look for the zero marker, is that right? I look for, Sorry, let me just draw it out real quick here. So we have it here. So negative 0 0.5 here along the bottom. Along the top, I'm looking for 0 0.00. And I'm corresponding that one. Anybody found that on the table? Uh, 0 0.3085, are we good there? We good? Okay, but notice it's this red area here, right? I don't want the red area, I want the blue area. So what I have to do is I have to subtract it from one, right? The whole area is one. The area I don't need is 0 0.3085. So now the question is, what's the area that I do need? Try to do some borrowing now. Nine, 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 ten, five, one. Nine six. Yes. So point six nine one five. We good? Now let's take a look at our calculator. Just want to make sure that we have all things covered here, so you guys know. The more we know, the better. Hey, look at that. The point six nine one four six, which would technically round off to five at the end of the day. We good? So we good. We know how to do it by calculator. We also know how the table works. The table sometimes works in reverse for us. On the last problem, then we actually had to subtract the two from each other. So that's even a weirder ballgame. Okay, 0.6914 is what we got here. So let me get rid of all these guys. Zunk. And it says, there it is. So notice the way they're writing it out like this. They actually did the complement. Look at this. They actually looked at the table. 1 minus 0 0.3085 gave us 0 0.6915. We did it by calculator. So your choice. We're good? So what does this correspond to? If 200 people came in the store, how many people in all probability would uh, stay at the store more than 37 minutes? Multiply the area times 200 and we got 138.3. So roughly speaking, 138 shoppers would be there for more than that. Okay, talk to me before we go on. Does that make sense to you guys? By table, by calculator, by everything. Okay, yeah, this was a 11, 11 uh, slides, but took a long time to get through here. Okay, and then
Huh, let's do those are shoppers. Let's do just one more example. We'll, we'll call it good. Sounds good. We'll try to do it by calculator as well. So all yours here. Let's see what this says. Triglycerides are uh, the number of fat in the blood cell or bloodstream. The average triglyceride level for U.S. adults ages 20 and older is 97 milligrams per deciliter of blood taken out. Oof. Deciliter is a tenth of a liter of blood. Assume that triglyceride levels of U.S. adults were at least 20 years old are normally distributed. So everybody is normal distribution. We've got the little normal curve happening. With a standard deviation of 25 milligrams per deciliter. So you randomly select U.S. adults who are trying at least 20 years of age. What is the probability that the person is less than 100? So draw it out if you can. Can you draw out the normal curve? Here's where we're going to do some drawing. Draw out the normal curve. Put uh, 97 as your middle. Say what your standard deviation is. So I just want to draw it out. Can you guys draw it out? And then from there, can let's do the normal curve. Here, in fact, I'm gonna go like this. I'm going to draw it out with you guys then. So I've got a normal curve here. There's my graph right there. Now it says it's a normal curve, so it goes up, comes back down. That's the way we draw a normal curve. We draw it a little bit better. There we're good. The, the exact middle of it is 97. And we call this mu. And off to the side somewhere, just gonna put standard deviation or sigma is 25. All right, what we want is we want the probability of the X value being less than 100. So here we go. Give you guys another two minutes here. Can you guys do this one? So if we draw it out, we are looking for 100. 100 would be about right over here. Is that true? This other side of the, I got here, that's 100. And I'm trying to say how many of them are going to be less than 100. That's cool. So that means I would want to go this way. Is that the way our table is arranged? Yeah, our table is arranged always to the left, right? Left of the process. So give you guys 30 seconds here, find the z-score. From the z-score, find the probability. Okay, let's do this one together. So we have, uh, let's see, let me make sure I have my, yeah, I'm gonna go this one. So x or, no, oh, sorry, z-score is going to be x minus mu divided by sigma. So how about 100 minus 97 divided by 25? Are we good there? And what do we get for that? Point, point 0.12? Yeah. Perfect point 0.12? Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so functions to the calculator here. What is it called, normal CDF? This is for the calculator, normal CDF is? Negative. 
Say again? For the lower? Right? Yeah. So for the lower one, lower Z, like negative 10,000, because you know we're going to cover everything there. I should get rid of the extra commas here because it's confusing. Going up to 0 0.12, 0 and 1, and go for it. What do we get? 0.5475. Five, four, seven, seven, five. Cool. Roughly fifty-five percent, right? Is what we got. Okay. Talk to me. Are we good? Anybody else did not get that? Tell me if you did not get that. I'll come by and help. Okay. And the fun part. You guys ready for the fun part now? Yeah. There's a fun part here. Your calculators is, is actually pretty cool because look at this. Let me do it myself as well here, huh? So distribution, uh, this one here, uh, negative 10,000 comma uh, 0 0.12 comma 0 comma 1 and we are good to go done. Sweet. Just wanna make sure before we go to break, are we good? Everybody's, anybody need help did not get that. Cool. Let's punch this in again. You guys ready for this? Now this is the wah moment. This is when you're like, oh, that's so awesome. And then we go to break. Okay. So here it is. As long as something is normally distributed, right? Notice Brian asked, how can we put in the zero and the ones each time, right? Because we're going back to the Z score, right? We're going to, to the standard normal curve. But your calculator, yes, it actually can handle the other stuff as well. So let's go for it. So let's plug in the numbers, not according to z-score, but according to x values themselves. We're good. So let's see if this works. Second, let's do this one together. Go to number two again. Everybody but Tristan. Uh, we're going to go and we're going to plug in. Let's see, this guy goes down like way, way to the left, right? Can we go down forever? Absolutely. Let's still put in our negative 10,000 because 100,000, whatever, it doesn't matter. What's the X we're trying to find? 100. According to our data, what is our average? What's our mu? 97. And according to our data, what's our standard deviation? 25. Click, enter, and da 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 da. <laughs> Bam, is that awesome? We get the same answer. Okay, so then the question is Mr. NGF, how come you tortured us getting the Z score each time? Uh, because whenever we're going to start comparing two curves to each other, we're actually going to still bring them into a normal curve. Okay, so we are going to have to learn how to bring them back into a normal curve and we can do comparisons. But if you're just dealing with one specific aspect, you can go directly with the X value. Okay, at that point, let's take our 10 minute break. We'll resume class afterwards. All right, class, let's go. Uh, five, three, normal distribution. And now we're gonna do finding values. So some more values with this stuff. And we're gonna learn everything there is, any which way to find any kind of value whatsoever with the normal curve. And then five, four is we're gonna to try to figure out how to make anything that we know into a normal curve, right? So we kind of have the tools for it in five, three, five, two, five, three. And then we're gonna make everything into a normal curve from there, which is pretty cool understanding of things. Okay, so let's jam. Um, so five, one, five, two, if we think about it, we had this going on. Is that right? We take an X value. We know what the X value is, right? We make it into a Z score from the Z score. We make it into a probability. And then we learn the aha moment. Like what? With technology, with calculators, we actually can go directly from X to the probability right away, which is what we just did last problem that we did. So now, dun, 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 now we're gonna go this way. So if we know the probability already, can we get back to the Z score? 
can we actually even get back to the X value eventually? So everything that you learned, let's go backwards on it. So first things first, problem number one, let's go. Find the Z-score that corresponds to a cumulative area of 0 0.63, sorry, 0 0.3632. See, dyslexia act, acting up again. So first things first, if you want to write down the problem, it's fine. Uh, but can you draw this for me? Think about where the middle is. Think about a normal curve. And where would 0 0.3632 be drawn? And cumulative area, which means up to that number, right? It's the left side. It's up to that value. See again? Okay, good, good. It pays to uh, have the, somehow it pays to have the notes in front of you. Okay, so let's look at this here. Let's see, uh, area of 0 0.3632. First of all, more than halfway, right at halfway, or less than halfway? It's gonna be less, huh? Because 0.5 or 50% would be half. So when you draw this out, and again, notice, notice what I'm doing is I'm putting a z-score here, right? My mu value is zero. And I know in my head, my z-score is one, right? I'm always one away. And so 0 0.3632, I think I'm going to get a, it kind of gives you the answer over here. I couldn't hide it fast enough, but it's probably it should give us an answer of zero or negative 0 0.35. That's going to be the the z-score that makes that area true. So we're going backwards. Okay, so let's do it by table first. If you guys have your book in front of you, open up to the table that has less than halfway. It's the table that looks like this, right? And it's the area is less than halfway, not the area that's more than halfway. Because the z-scores on that one is positive, or you could say, uh, go to table four that has negative z scores, right? Because the negative z scores are on less than sign. Okay, so can you find me an area? Just find 0 0.3632. If you kind of look down the chart, it starts off upper left is 0, 0, 0, 0002, that's too small. The lower bottom is 5.500, 0, 0, right? And if you, I'm going to take a, take a little screenshot of the table itself. Let's see if this makes sense. So if you scroll all the way down, so zero, this point zero 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 two, hardly any area here. You go all the way down to over here, it's gonna be like almost halfway. So you just kind of look, look straight across, find your point threes, after you find your point threes, find your point three two, and it looks like uh, it's point three six three two. There it is, right here. I need a laser pointer. I think it's control, control. Control Alt. No. Okay. I'm going to find my laser pointer. There it is. Okay. There it is. That's what we're trying to find. So let's see what we have. We have our hundredths digit or hundredths unit right here is five. And notice this right here is you give me the tens digit here. And then this is my units digit, right? So it's going to be negative 0 0.3. And the question is what's happening at the end? It's a five at the end. And the z-scores are always two digits long. We're good? We're at two decimal places after the decimal. That's it right there. We're good. Boom. Done. The z-score is a negative 0 0.35. Done by table. All right. Let's do this by calculator. And then we'll... We'll do, ding, ding. okay, turning calculator on, let's go with it here. So no, that normal CDF, right? That's going forward, right? What we wanna do is we wanna go backwards. And in algebra, whenever you went backwards in the operations, you always called it an inverse. Inverse meant you go backwards. So go to second function and your distribution law. And notice number, we've been using number two all this time, right? Notice underneath it, number three is inverse normal. Hey, I think we're gonna use that one. 
inverse of your normal curve. That's what we want. So click enter, zunk. Now we're gonna click enter our area 0 0.3632. Now we've got to enter a few more things here as well. So we're gonna go zero comma one. And I think you know what that means already. And hopefully it works. So negative 0.3 and then right here, there's your five. So the z-score, even though we have a lot of accuracy over here, we really just need two digits past the decimal place. Okay, good there. There's number one is done. Any questions on number one? Ooh, okay. Jam, let's go to number two. It's a little bit different, a little bit more complicated. Let's just kind of think with me here. Number two. We need to find the z-score that corresponds to 10.7% of the distribution's area now to the right this time. And that's our little problem. Our problem is that we don't like to go to the right. We like cumulative area. We don't like area to the right. So real quick here, can you draw this for me? Now, you're not gonna put percentages, right? You're gonna put decimals, right? So draw a normal curve. about 10% of the area to the right. That means 90% of the area is gonna be already covered, right? And if you're waiting for me, I'll do the area too. So if you're waiting for me, how about this? Normal curve goes up and down. Zero is what we want. And the area here, you're gonna put a little marker down. We don't know what, we don't know if it's 1.24 yet. We're good? We don't know that yet. But the area is 0 0.1075. So this is the area that we want. And notice it's going off to the right this time. Okay, everybody good there. So far, so good. Okay, here's our little problem. That our table, it doesn't look to the right. It looks to the left of the area. Our calculator does the exact same thing. Our calculator only looks for cumulative area, does not look for, for that. Tristan, were you able to find the inverse norm? Tristan? Yeah, okay, so here it goes. Here's a little problem. We're gonna to have to go to the left. So if uh, 0 0.1075, if this area is covered, what's the area that's not covered? Or subtract from one, how about that? Uh, we don't know this yet. Yeah, we're going to get to that in just a bit. Kind of gave you the answer. Couldn't cover it up fast enough. Okay, talk to me. One minus 0 0.1075. Perfect. 0 0.8925. Okay, so grabbing your table again. And this time you're going to grab your table that has Z scores that are positive. positive z-score, so you don't want this table here that has more than 50% covered. All right, and we're looking for 0.8925. That's what we're looking for, 0.8925. And it should look something like this. Notice it's the table that has the positive z-scores because you're above 50%. And 0.825 means it's a z-score of 1.2, and the hundreds, hundreds place is a 4. Okay, 1.28, 1.24. So boom, and there it is. My z-score is a 1.24. Are we good? Okay, by chart. By calculator, we have to do the same thing. We do have to do the subtraction from 1 because our calculator only does it left hand as well. So we go to distribution, go down to number three, 0 0.8925, 0 0.8925, I'm just checking myself. 
uh, standard deviation or mean is zero, standard deviation is one, and voila, and da 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 da. Okay, are we good there? Just making sure. Anybody did not get 1.24? Anybody need questions on how to get to 1.24? It's pretty simple. So again, know which function you want to use on the calculator. Okay. That was the intro. That was the fact that we can go backwards, right? And we calculated backwards here. So now let's do one, two, three examples maybe-ish with percentiles, because that's something we do as well in mathematics. So, so percentiles. So find a z-score that corresponds to the, it says P5, but P5 means the fifth percentile. So it just means 5% of the data falls at or below that number, or below that number actually, no, just below. Okay, so sorry, giving you guys the answers already here. So normal curve, 5% of a normal curve, it's not more than halfway, right? It's gonna be like way, way to the left. Okay? So if you draw it, it looks kind of like this, 5%. Be right here. Okay. Again, you don't know negative 1.645 yet. So on the calculator, you could do it directly, right? Go for it. Can you guys do it on the calculator directly? Here, real quick, here, boom, inverse operation again. Number three. And I got a 0 0.05. Uh, milieu is zero, standard deviation is one, and voila. And the answer is negative 1.6448. And then we're going to go with four, five. Hey, that's interesting. You know, the previous z-scores, we always went to the hundredths place. And now we're going to the thousandths place, huh? Okay, Mr. H, what's the reason for it, huh? Because 5% and 10% and 1%, those three things, 1%, 5%, 10%, those are so used in, in mathematics and used in statistics that we just go a little bit more place accuracy on those. If you on the test put negative 1.65, I would totally accept it. Okay, so no need to worry there. But 1%, uh, 5%, 10%. 10%. Those are so customary that we go just a little bit more in depth. Okay, talk to me. Anybody did not find negative 1.645? Okay, class, let's go. And then next one, all yours. How about the 50% marker? So I need, hold on, let's draw it out first. Draw it out the normal curve, go up, go down. And where would 50% of the data be? All right, you should get a funny number. If you get a funny number, that's great. So let's go with it. If you were to draw this out, wouldn't it look like this? And 50% of the data, isn't it actually exactly at zero? Is that right? Okay, so if our average is zero, standard deviation is zero, plug it into the calculator. And if you got zero, you did good, All right? Because 50% of the data would be at zero. Awesome. OK. 
Okay. And again, please raise your hand. I'll come by and help. Please raise your hand because I need to know if you need help here. All right. And the rest of you, if you don't need help, uh, I'm going to give you guys this one right here, the 90, 90th percentile. Give me the Z-score for the 90th. Huh? Are you going to test if you have a question like this? If you look at 90th percentile, then yeah, you should be fine. Uh huh. So real quick here, uh, you plugged in. I think everybody got this one, right? Boom, 1.28 is perfect. Uh, real quick here, I do want to mention something here. So notice, um, let's go back to table just so we see it here. On the table, go back to table. Do you guys see 0 0.9000 on your table? First of all, you guys are going to use positive z-score table or negative z-score table? Positive z-score table, is that right? <laughs> uh, the one that has more than 50%. So notice as you look down here, you don't have a 0 0.9000. That's our problem. So then what we do here is we look for the one that's the closest. So 0.9 looks like, where are we at? 0.9. I see a 0.9, you guys said, oh, 0 0.9015. I see that one on the table. So maybe I should not look at it upside down. Okay, guys, real quickly here. So I see this on the table. I see a 0.8997. And I see a point, and you guys tell me if you see this one on the table. You guys see those on the table. And this one corresponds to uh, 1.2. If you go up on this one, that corresponds to 0 0.08. And this one corresponds to 0 0.09. Are we good there? Everybody see that on their chart? So now the question is this. If it's 90th percentile, if it's this right here, 0 0.90, which one of these is the closest? Yeah, this one is only 0 0.0003 away, huh? This guy is over by 0 0.0015. So this is 15 over. This is only three over. We good? So on the table, if you're going to use the table, what you do is you, you just go to the closest one. When I was doing statistics, not fun. First of all, there were dinosaurs outside. Second, we had to extrapolate how far we were away. The teacher did not allow us just to pick the closest one. If we were at 0 0.9000, what the teacher made us do is to say, look, see how you're 0.3 here, but 0.5 away, you're actually five times more away from this one than that one. Then the question is, what is five times more away, this one and this one? So we actually had to go to the thousandth place on our Z-score. No fun. Just want to say no fun on that. Okay, so percentile rankings, we're good. Next, now let's play around a little bit with the Z and the X value. I think we'd be almost done. So, should put it this way here. Before we get to this formula here, let's go like this. You guys remember this little formula? X minus mu over that. You guys remember that? Oh, no. Should not recognize that. That's the one you should recognize. So some algebra here. Can we solve, those that have good algebra skills, can you solve this equation for x? What should we do to solve this equation for x? Usually we get rid of fractions right away, right? So what do we see in the bottom fraction? Sigma. So what we'll do is we'll multiply both sides by sigma. So those will cancel. So sigma times z, x minus mu. What should we do to get x by itself? Add mu. Just need to add this little at plus mu here. Did you guys do that in algebra where there's like no numbers? There was only variables and you solve for whatever you needed to solve for. Same thing here. So mu plus sigma z is equal to x, or the other way around, x is equal to mu plus, it's z sigma, same thing, whatever. Okay, so 
now you guys can write this formula down. So makes, I guess we should do this here, makes Z go to X. That's what this is for. Given Z, you get your X value out of it. And then we'll put it all together in just a bit. Okay, are we good there? So now, again, what are we trying to work on? We're trying to work on this process right here, guys. Real quick here, just so we know. We're trying to work on this process here, right? Five, two was going this way. Five, three, we're trying to get ourselves back this way. So we went from probability back to z-score, right? So now let's go z-score back to the x value. That's what we want to do. That's huge. Okay, let's just do a little bit of work here. So a veterinarian records weigh cats treated with the clinic. Cats are normally distributed with a mean of two pounds, oh, sorry, nine pounds, and a standard deviation of two pounds. Find the X weights that corresponds to the Z score. So from what I gathered here is the fact that my mu is nine, we're good. Standard deviation is two. And can I use the formula that I just wrote down from the previous slide? Like, absolutely. Let's plug that thing in. Z-score of 1.96 corresponds to, I got my formula, there it is, x is equal to mu plus z times sigma. Not so easy, I'm gonna let you guys do it. All right, uh, 1.96, let's plug it in. So uh, this is all good. Just a good calculator here, nine plus 1.96 times two. And the answer is? Twelve point nine two. Yeah. <laughs> good job. 12.92 pounds, are we good? Okay, anybody give me the next one, number two, answer is? Let's see. Oh yeah, that's okay if you put both parentheses there, sure. Uh, go with that. 8.12 is good. And the last one, z-score of zero corresponds to? And the last one better be nine, right? Because zero score of zero means what? You're right in the middle, right? So correspondence of Z equals zero means you are at mu already. Okay, are we good? So we should understand this, right? This is kind of the important part here is that all we're doing here, this is the aha moment. We're just changing scales on us, that's all. 
Notice the distribution right here. Let's do this one because this would be a good one to sort of see. Here's my normal distribution. If I'm looking at a Z distribution, all is I'm at zero and I have one standard deviation away each time, right? If I'm looking at X weights, I'm at nine. And I'm looking at two being the standard deviation. That's all. So then that 1.96 just corresponds to this and everything lines up exactly the same. So it's really just a matter of changing scales. That's all we're doing. Okay, let's do one from beginning to end here. Oh, state of California, nice. Uh, scores for the California Peace Officer Standards and Training Test are normally distributed. Anybody that you guys know works for the CHP? No. Yes, okay, that's one of those good relationships you should have. Like, yeah, sure, I keep up that relationship. Well, there, was a, there was a book that's like the little book of life and it says uh, the three friends you should have or the four friends you should have, I forgot which one. It's uh, a doctor, a plumber, police officer, and like a judge or something like that, right? There's the four, if you can have those relationships with you, you'll need those from time to time. Plumber, yes, you'll need it sometimes. <laughs> Okay, let's go with it. So, and with the mean of 50, standard deviation is 10. The agency will only hire applicants with the scores on the top 10%. So now the question is this, what's the lowest score you gotta earn in order to be eligible for the agency? Ooh, that's crazy. All right, so first things first, can we draw it out? So the drawing out is the top 10%. That means we're on the 90th percentile. Is that right? So we have something looks like this if you kind of want to draw out everything here. So we go like this. The top 10%, where is that coming from? It corresponds to here. And we know the for our standard curve, right? The Z curve. It's zero and it's, we want to go to the 1.2. Oh, how do we get the 1.28? That one, let's work it out together. That one's going to go to, so let's do this one together here. Let's see, you guys talk to me here. We're going to go from percentage, right? We want to go from percentage to Z score. And we already did. Did we hit 1.28 before? Yeah, I made you guys do it, right? 90th percentile. It was distribution inverse. Uh, 90th percentile would be 0 0.90. Uh, mu is zero, standard deviation is one, and we got ourselves this guy right here. <clears throat> okay, everybody good there? How we got the 1.28? Cool. Next is now we're going to take that 1.28 and we're going to buy your paper and pencil. We're going to convert that into an X score. All yours go. Something about like something we just talked about. Yep, going as I go here. So let's see.
All right, talk to me, see if that makes sense. So on the test, the person should get a 62.8 or higher. That will give us, and now, now the thing is this right here, if the scores are not, let's say the score, if the scores are only integer digits, right? That means they have to get a score of how much? So if the scores are only digit, uh, only whole numbers, what has to be the score then? It has to be 63, right? Right, because it has to be 62.8 or higher, right? A trivia question, you guys ready? What happens if this was 62.1? What happens if it was like this? Thank you, for still 63, right? Because it needs, right, we're, we're cutting off things, right? But then when we have to move up, right, it has to be this or higher. So 62 still won't cut it. Still have to be a 63. So you have to round up no matter what the number is. Good job. That's cool. Okay. So let's do this here. Let's go back to this little function right here. Let me go and hit this little button. All the fun stuff in statistics. You guys ready for this? Do you guys see in our program on our calculator, do you guys see a zero and a one? I see a zero and a one, don't I? If I see a zero and a one in terms of scale, because everything's just a scale, right? So can I just make the scale into 50 and 10? Let's go with it. Let's try it. Let's do inverse norm inverse norm, and what we want is we want 0.9, right? Is that what we want? Yeah, the 90th percentile, we good? Comma, and our mu, our mu is going to be 50. Standard deviation again, anybody? 10, and enter, and voila, do we get what we want? How super fun. Okay, so calculator can go from probability all the way back to the X value itself. Okay, one more. We good there? One more problem to go and we'll be done for the day. Zunka, Zunka, all yours guys. Can you go from beginning to end? Here's what I need, randomly selected Sample of women ages 20 to 34. The mean total cholesterol level is 179 milligrams per deciliter. Standard deviation is 38.9 milligrams. Assume that cholesterol levels in all people or in all women are normally distributed. Find the total highest cholesterol level of women in the 20 to 34 age bracket that have and still could be in the bottom 1%. Say again. Okay, got it, got it. Out of curiosity, total out of curiosity, how many uh, before coming to class today, you kind of just flipped through 5.2 and 5.3? Just kind of flipped through it, took a look at any formulas, like, oh, that's what we're going to cover. Like, oh, wow, we're going to cover the normal curve again. Oh, 3.53. Three. Oh, wow, we're going to go backwards on it. That's cool. Good, good. Wow, guys, we're at not 10%, right? We're at the 1% marker, right? This is so cool. Okay, so let's kind of do it two different ways. First of all, can we do it by means of the Z-score and then, and then make the Z-score go to the X? Let's do, it both. let's do it both ways, right, before time ends. So first things first, on a calculator, uh, point or 1%, 1% 1 is 0 0.01, is that right? That's what a correspondence is. 
Can you guys give me the z-score that corresponds to uh, the p-value 0 0.01? Negative 2.23, 33? Yes, sir, absolutely. Okay, guys, try this on your calculator. Try to do that one. Inverse operation, 0 0.01. This one is a very important one. Remember I said 1% is important, 5% and 10%. Those you guys will see a lot as we get into chapter six, seven, eight. Okay, here it is. Clear, clear. We have uh, inverse operation of the normal curve, uh, 0 0.01. Mu is one, standard deviation is, uh, mu is zero, standard deviation is one. Negative 2.33 is good. Once you have that, can you guys convert that into the X coordinate? X is uh, mu plus standard deviation times Z. Negative 2.33 times standard deviation 38.9. What do we have there? 88.1? 363, so 348, 8.4-ish. Hey guys, also, if you look at the back of the book and you look at your answer, if you're just slightly off just by a little bit here, it could be some rounding off error, so kind of know, because the book gives you 88.5, but if you're at 88.4, you're good. Okay, so does that make sense to you guys, Elizabeth, good? Okay, if I were to look at a normal curve, it looks like this right here. So. The bottom 1% or lower cholesterol corresponds to negative 233. And as you do the work, 88.363. Just almost done. One more time, guys. One more time. Let's do it by uh, let's do it. Let's do it by digitally here. Sorry, I know I'm talking too fast here. Did you guys, everybody got that answer? Okay, got a couple of people that didn't here. So let me check that out. Those of you that got it, try to um, do it by your calculators right away. Yeah, still be correct, yeah. Uh, let me actually do it this way here, guys. Uh, let me do it the technology way, and then we'll be done. If need, if anybody needs help with going the first way, we'll do it the first way. So technology way, here we go. Same operation, is that right? Inverse operation. All right, where we want the uh, 0.01%. Our mu is, again, how much? 179, oh, not, not eight, but nine. And then standard deviation is, thank you, 38.9, perfect. And click, and 88.5 is what the Kappa gives us. Perfect. Okay, we are done for the day. Those of you that did not get the first way or the second way, stick around, I'll just help you real quick. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time as we do five,